The concurrency system manages concurrent transactions in a database by implementing isolation levels and trying to maintain good database performance. However, there's a trade-off between isolation levels and performance, so locking is a technique used to handle this. A lock permits or denies a transaction from reading or writing data. Database locks exist to prevent two or more databases from updating the same exact piece of data at the same exact time. A shared lock only permits a transaction to read data but not write data. Concurrent transactions can have a shared lock on the same data. An exclusive lock permits a transaction to read and write data, and if one transaction holds an exclusive lock, then no concurrent transactions can have a shared or exclusive lock on the same data. Lock scope is the set of data that is reserved by a lock. It's typically a single row of data so that other rows can be accessed by other transactions. Lock scope could also be a block or the whole table in the case of where a transaction needs to access several, several rows of data. A lock scope could also include indexes. The concurrency system figures out when to grant or release locks by monitoring active transactions. Lock requests are handled by the lock manager, which tracks grants and releases locks. The concurrency system implements each transaction's isolation levels by requesting shared and exclusive locks as needed. And the concurrency system also reduces the duration of transactions that are waiting for lock data by minimizing lock scope. So 2PL stands for two-phase locking, which is basic, strict, or rigorous. A serializable isolation level means that a transaction is independent from other transactions. And there's three types of two-phase locking, which help prevent conflicts and ensure serializable transactions. There's basic two-phase locking, where a transaction is set to follow the basic two-phase locking protocol, and if locking and unlocking can be done in just two phases, which are the growing phase or shrinking phase. Growing phase is where new locks on data items may be acquired, but none can be released. And shrinking phase when, is when existing locks may be released, but no new locks can be acquired. Strict two-phase locking is when a transaction must hold all its exclusive locks until it commits or aborts. And most relational database concurrency systems implement this type. There's also rigorous two-phase locking where a transaction holds both shared and exclusive locks until the transaction commits or rolls back. And this type is easier to implement than strict, but not as efficient because shared locks are held longer. A deadlock is a situation in which two or more transactions are waiting for another to give up locks. A dependent transaction is waiting for data locked by another transaction, and a cycle of dependent transactions indicates deadlock has occurred. Concurrency systems manage and prevent deadlocks in several ways. They use uh, aggressive locking, where each transaction starts with a request to all locks. And if all the locks are granted, then the transaction runs to completion. And if not, the transaction waits until all other transactions release the locks. Then there's data ordering, and the data is ordered, and the, each concurrent transaction takes locks in order. There's timeout where each transaction requests the lock rolls back if the lock's waiting exceeds a fixed period of time set by the DBA. And cycle detection where if the concurrency system discovers a cycle of dependent transactions, then it selects and rolls back the transaction that has the fewest lock rows or most recent start time, whichever is easier to manage. Snapshot isolation is a popular alternative to two-phase locking. Snapshot Isolation is an optimistic technique which executes concurrent transactions without locks by creating a snapshot of the data. So the transactions never wait, but may sometimes restart if all the operations are processed. And it works in this way. At first, it makes a snapshot or a private copy of the data that's read or written by the transaction. And then it writes updates to private copies of the data. And then it determines if there's any transaction conflicts with an update, and then it writes updates to the database or just rolls back the transaction. And it, there's also a serializable snapshot isolation, which is a serializable version of a snapshot isolation, which ensures serializable schedules when isolation level is set to serializable.